Welcome to the third and final day of Natutsi Sofa Talks hosted by Design Boom. I'm Lynn Myers from Design Boom and this week we've been hosting a series of live Q&As from Natutsi Italia's flagship store here in Via Dorini in Milan. I'm here to talk about Natutsi's latest collection, The Circle of Harmony, for which Natutsi invited eight different designers to translate the identity of the brand with particular reference to its relationship with Puglia in the south of Italy. The aim of this very collaborative project was to create a design blend whereby the vision and aesthetics of each designer was mixed together in harmony. Earlier today, we spoke to Bori of By Bori, and to end the final day of the talks, I'm joined by Nika Zupans, who has created the Deep Collection, which makes particular reference to the sea. Welcome, Nika. Hello, thank you. Thank you for having me. How was this collaboration born? Uh, I mean, it was born on, on, on many different levels, uh, but I think it really started with the Adriatic Sea because uh, just after I met PJ at the meeting uh, last year at Salone del Mobile, I was invited to visit Natuzzi uh, headquarters. And right when I flew from Ljubljana, from Slovenia to Bari, and I flew over this wonderful Adriatic Sea that is kind of a body of water that we both share. And when I landed into the Bari, I really remember this strong vision that I had. And I said, okay, this has to be the essence of the collection. I also, you know, saw that name deep. Mm -hmm. And I shared this uh, idea with PJ very quickly, and he also loved it. So it was the beginning. Uh, we knew we have to work on that because it represented also these common values. On one hand, this was the thing that is somehow dividing us. Mm -hmm. But then again, this is sort of an aquatorium to which we all belong, and it was the real perfect, um, let's say, starting point for, for the whole collection. And when you say when you had this vision of deep, was it just the, the name itself or was it the, the shapes? What came to mind? I mean, I, personally, I really love the sea. It's, mm -hmm. I, I love to spend my time near the sea. I also windsurf. So, and I also get really inspired while, while being in a close contact with the sea. Um, I don't know. It was this... I would say it was a feeling, okay. more of a, let's say, explanation of different things. Uh, it was all of that, but then again, uh, this beautiful feeling that you get from this sea, which I wanted to imprint into the collection. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the collection. So you're sitting on the, the wave sofa, and this is the Adore armchair. And you also have the, the bookcase be and behind us. Tell us a little bit about the pieces, the collection. Um, what I think is really interesting about this collection is the sort of a merge uh, of the Natuzzi DNA and, of course, the DNA of our studio. Um, I think this is really interesting because if you look from the far, these are two, let's say, different approaches. The, the, the core DNA of Natuzzi in sense of the aesthetics and the core DNA of my designs. But I think that uh, Natuzzi, of course, was looking something a little bit new in mm -hmm. adding to their DNA. And uh, all of this started from these two points. So from these two contrasts, which when combined together can give a very wonderful result. So once we had this story, because I think the story was really important for this collection, it was in a way easy, you know, to, to play with the shapes of the sea, um, with the colors, with the ideas. But then again, all the time keeping in mind all the restrictions that you also have when you work with uh, such a big, big brand as Natuzzi. And this for me was really a special pleasure mm -hmm. because by profession I'm uh, um, and by heart, I'm an industrial designer. So I really like to work when I'm confined in a space with different restrictions, technology, budgets, transport, packaging, everything. So it was really thrilling to work from all these pers perspectives, mm -hmm. perspectives at once. So from the beauty of things, from the symbolic meanings, from the stories, to really on this hand, hand on things approach, speaking about functionality, material, sustainability. And what's your favorite piece from the collection? Um, 
this is a, it's always a hard question because somehow you, you love all the pieces always. But in this collection, I could say it's the table, especially the tabletop. Yes, yes. Um, that's yeah, it was impressive. also born with this very beautiful story that I can share with you. Yeah, please, please um, go ahead. Because, uh, uh, of course, we decided to do something unique for the top. So to use a material which will be made especially for this collection and available only in Natuzzi. So with PJ, we decided to visit the production company. And the visit happened to be on the very same day actually the very last day before the lockdown of Italy. I oh, think wow. it was 5th of March. So we get up, uh, let's say, at 5 o'clock in Bari. We flew to Bergamo, which was Zona Rossa. So it was really yeah. the, the center of everything. And then we went with the car all the way to Verona to hand pick all of these stones. So to really, you know, make this last detail to add to all these materials, all this shape, all those stones, you know, finding the right colors, playing like little children. And I think the effect of this uh, uh, really made by hand approach is it's seen. And I think that the table is just wonderful. Yeah, it's really impressive. Um, Thank you. I want to ask you a question about your own roots. You've said um, this, that you have a strong personal relationship with nature. And you once said, I love nature and I chose to stay in Ljubljana and not move to Milan because from here it takes just an hour by car and I'm really in wild nature, in the woods, in the Alps or on the coast of the Adriatic Sea. How does nature fit into your design? Um, I would say it's not about really fitting, it, fitting in into my design. It's more of helping me stay really intuitive uh, and uh, having this ability of keeping a certain distance to the things that I do. Because I think while, at, at least uh, it, uh, if I can speak for myself, while mm -hmm. in nature you kind of get this reflection, uh, this distance toward the things that you are working on, um, and I really use it as my inspiration, but not like, you know, like actual inspiration. So to take shapes from nature, to take clues from mm -hmm. nature, but more as a state of being, as a state of uh, mind. Um, you've said as well that this collection ought to be lived as an emotional experience. You've said, close your eyes and imagine that you're on the seashore on a summer night under a sky full of stars. To sit and listen for a while to your heart, immersing yourself in deep thoughts. In your opinion, is this what good design should do to transport people to somewhere else or make them reflect internally? I, th I mean, I think good design, of course, have to fit to different parameters and story Telling is one of these parameters, which I think it's really, really important, but it's not the first. I think the first uh, design really has a very strong voice. And today we, we have to use this voice and really address themes that are really important, like sustainability, the climate change. Uh, uh, it's a really powerful tool. So we can speak about these things. But then, of course, I think each object needs to have sort of an, of an X factor, sort of a charisma, something you kind of, something that moves you. And this is this story. And this, of course, is something that I always try to do with all of my objects to somehow inflate them with a certain energy, with a certain poetry, with a certain story. But I think you achieve that with your hands, with, with the drawing, mm -hmm. with the material. So with this eclectic combinations of all of the parameters that I was just describing. Sure. Um, we've mentioned a lot before in the talks the, the issue of sustainability and you just mentioned it there as well. What does sustainability in design mean to you? How do you ensure that your products are sustainable? I mean, it, it's quite a big question, of yeah. course, and there is no one flat answer to it. Uh, maybe you know, to, to put it together, I see it in two ways. One for sure is to try to design in a way that you create objects that have this long lasting value. So objects that are not only in trend, objects that are actually not too loud, objects that might be inherited or, or are there also for future generations. So in this case, also using the long lasting materials like stone, the metals, the uh, very, very good fabrics. I think this is all 
one part of the sustainability. Of course, on the other hand, we have to include more and more materials that are recyclable, materials that are made from this recyclable plastic. Be very careful, not just with the design, but also how the design is packed, how the, the objects are you know, taken away, mm -hmm. so how the objects die. I think this all is very important. And uh, we designers, I mean, we, we have a strong voice and so do the companies. So I think in this merge, we can slowly, hopefully change the things. But I think this is a key issue today in design. Was that something as well, which informed your design of this collection? Some, something that could be timeless, that could resist trends and fashions and that would... Yes, for sure. I think already this beginning, so, so this merge, this blend of Natuti DNA and the sure. DNA of my designs is somehow headed into this direction to try to create something with lost le uh, last, last, lasting value. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, th this was uh, one of the approaches. But then again, we also tried to uh, incorporate the sustainability in all the materials where possible. And it's also something that we are still researching because we, with this COVID situation, we were somehow, I mean, cut in the final phase of making this project uh, like really final, but we still have a way and I'm sure we will also introduce some other very interesting uh, solutions in the future. And it must be great for you to see it after all yes. these months. So. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's really wonderful to see it because this is, you know, for, for a designer, this is kind of a, the big part of the design process to yeah. finally see and feel and, and touch all of the projects. Great. And we have some questions now from our Instagram users across okay. both Design Boom and the Tootsie platforms. So I'll just, we have quite a few. So... The first question, what made you want to be a designer? I don't think there was any special reason. It was really something that very early on I somehow felt was the best uh, field uh, through which I could tell my story. Okay. Because I always had this feeling that there is a big story that I want to tell. And somehow design felt uh, as, as the perfect tool for telling it. What is your favorite object that you've designed up until now so across all of your work i really don't have one you don't have a favorite? no 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 i don't have a because you know they are and then you know each year i think each year the new products are my favorite products okay. because it's the biggest excitement you know the adrenaline everything good answer um what's the biggest challenge facing designers right now um as I say, uh, consumerism, um, sustainability, these real moral questions, uh, of course, combined with this urge to create new things. I think these are the challenges. How and why and how many to produce new things, how to position them, how to process them. And as a, when you're talking about sustainability and this responsibility as a designer, mm -hmm. do you feel it's inhibiting or do you feel it's... It's just no part of your approach. I mean, I... I does it I, restrict you or do you feel it? No, no, I don't feel it as a restriction. I feel it as a wonderful new um, issue which op is opening the doors for better creativity, for innovation. Um, it's exciting in a way. It's yeah. beautiful that we are offered this opportunity to think in this, you know, wider uh, places. Okay. We also have a question that asks about your design process. Can you tell us more about your process and approach when designing a piece? So, how I mean, do you start? This, uh, it really depends uh, whether I'm working uh, just for myself, for a limited edition, for a gallery, or for a company. In case of when I work with a company, I think uh, one of the biggest talents that you have to have is to really feel your client in sense of that you really understand their philosophy mm -hmm. and that then you are able to offer and find things they need without them even knowing that they need them. Uh, I would say this is kind of a, uh, the essence to, 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 to this starting point of the design. But then, of course, uh, it depends. Usually, I really like to think. I don't sketch. So I just think. Oh, really? 
No, I sketch like really quick sketches mm-hmm. just to remember, but I like to somehow design in my head. I, I mm. have no better way of explaining it. It's like a little book, so I kind of open, you it's know, the, <laughs> the, and I search and I see all of these ideas and until I then I see an idea that I really feel in my heart and I know this is an idea, I have to work on it. And then I usually go straight into the computer, into the 3D modeling. And then, of course, in studio, we also work together with my product design team and my product design assistants. And then we take that idea further. Mm -hmm. But I always include, of course, early on, the technology, the materials, the innovation. So it's all in this very first thing. Day one it has to be combined in order to function. And then, of course, we we introduce the projects to the clients or to the galleries. And uh, if it's a good fit, we start to work with the company, with the company's product development. Uh, And I really enjoy that part because it's, it's also so important because this is where you become a team and this is where good things are really born. Because they, of course, go over your you know, suggestions, technology, proposals. Uh, and it's, it's a, lot, a lot of really beautiful tension that is hap- happening in that phase. And of course, after that, it's, it's the, the, the product here in Natuzzi store <laughs> in Villa, Via Durini in Milano. Uh, I just wanted to ask you as well, was there something, when you're talking about working with clients, was there something special about this collaboration with Natuzzi, the circle of harmony? Because... I know PJ was talking about it's not just sharing ideas, but it's also about coming around a table, sharing food, sharing wine, and just that really holistic approach. Do you have any special memories from the I mean, the, the time whole together? process, the whole time that I spent in Puglia, because I really visited many, many times. It's a very big collection. It was really wonderful. And it's, it's of course, it's much more than just being a client and a designer. You, you, as I said, you have to understand the company but also company needs to feel you Mm -hmm. so i think it's 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 a friendship uh from the beginning it's uh i always felt i really felt being part of the natuzzi family in the real sense uh and i also feel all of this work it's a teamwork it's not just my design um and this is always beautiful but it happens only in these cases of kind of a harmony the circle the circle the circle of harmony. of harmony otherwise it's it's a certain magic it doesn't just happen final question um from another user as a designer where does your creativity come from i mean this is this is hard to answer yep. because it's there all the time i think for me this inspiration creativity it's there for 24 hours it's always there you are always on a search but maybe as i said when i was very little i i felt that there is a story i need to tell and probably this is the story that i'm telling now thank you so much nika thank you so much absolute for pleasure me. speaking to you thank and you a great end to to this week and i just want to say A huge thank you to all the designers that we've spoken to this week. And also a huge thank you as well to Natsutsi for for inviting Design Boom into this circle of harmony. And finally, thanks to everyone that's been watching. Have a great weekend.